It's a little rounded pouch with a drawstring. Slow stitching on one side in solid. Fabric collage and stitching on the other. Join me as I make this pouch today. There's a free pattern available for the two pattern pieces that I used for this project. And I'll put a link in the description so you can go and get that pattern if you want to use it. Use the code STITCHED and the pattern will be free. So let's get started. The first thing I've done is traced my pattern pieces onto two pieces of felt and I've cut them out roughly leaving my lines visible and just cutting outside of those lines. And you can see that I haven't cut them perfectly, it's just kind of a rough shape. I flip them over and then I'm gonna create my collage on top of that. So on the one side, I've taken one piece of fabric and I've basted it on using basting stitches. I really liked the look of this fabric and it was so beautiful that I thought, one side I'll just do slow stitching and the other side I'll create a collage. So here are all my fabrics. I've just placed them on top of this greenish yellow piece of fabric. So now I need to base them down. I'm taking applique pins, which are very small pins and they're very sharp. Now I'm moving around the piece, adding pins here and there. Now I've closed my case and I've brought out a magnetic pin holder. And so as I stitch and base these on, I'm gonna remove them and put them in that holder. I'm using regular sewing thread. I'm just gonna move around the piece and baste all those pieces down. So what I do is I come from the back, I've tied a knot in the end of my thread, and I take a small stitch on the front and a larger stitch on the back. I just move across the piece this is tacking down all of my tiny pieces of fabric so they're gonna stay in place and I don't have to worry about them and I can take the pins out fairly quickly. I like to leave my pins in for the least amount of time possible. And I really prefer this method of basting with thread. That way everything's where I want it to be. Nothing's gonna poke me and the way that I'm stitching with these small stitches and just a few, one or two stitches in each piece, depending on the size, means that I have a little bit of room to move each little patch around as I stitch them. If I want it to be a little more crooked, a little more straight, I still have the leeway to do that as I'm stitching. And it doesn't take too long to baste all of these down, and I feel like it's really worth it. So now all the little bits are basted in place. They're not gonna come off. I can focus now on my stitching. I'm gonna start by stitching this piece and this green piece I'm gonna put aside and stitch that second. I'm gonna choose floss colors now. I've pulled out two colors of this rusty orange, one that's a little more yellow, one that's a little more orange. I've picked two shades of green, one that goes with the yellow green where my collage is, and the other that goes with my solid green color. I've picked turquoise to go with some of my little patchwork pieces, and that's a good place to start for stitching. So here you can see I've gotten a good start on securing the edges of my fabric. I've just gone around with straight stitches. I've chosen different colors, and what this has done is it's securing down each little piece of fabric. I like to do this with all of my collages. It just means that even though it's raw edge and there's gonna be some frayed edges and some threads, that the pieces are not gonna come up when this bag is used. So now I'm gonna add even more stitching. I'm gonna make sure that every piece is surrounded in these straight stitches to secure them down. So now all my pieces are surrounded with stitches, except for a little bit on the bottom there because I feel that's going to be taken up when I stitch the bag together. So now it's time to remove the basting stitches. I can still see them a little bit in a few places and it's a bit distracting and they don't need to be there anymore. 
So I'm just going to flip my piece over. I'm going to clip the threads that I can see. And then I will flip my piece back over. I'm going to take the back of a needle, the dull end, not the sharp end. And I'm going to gently pull on those tiny little stitches. Some will come out quite easily. Other ones need a little tug. And I might even need to bring out my scissors to snip some of those pieces off. I should also mention that all the stitching I've done here to surround my patchwork was done with two strands of embroidery floss. And that's generally what I use. I find that it's just the right thickness to get the stitches that I want. I would say experiment with what you're comfortable with. Sometimes three is really nice. And of course, you can use all six if you want a really thick line. The next step is to add slow stitching lines to my piece. And I'm choosing a pearl cotton size five, which is quite thick compared to embroidery floss. And it's a twisted thread, so it won't come apart. And I've chosen it mostly because I like this color. And it's also really nice to do slow stitching with a pearl cotton. What I'm doing here is I'm just auditioning different ways that I could do lines. I could go across, I could go up and down. And I think what I'm gonna do is change my direction. Maybe do half of it in one direction and half of it in another direction. I'm looking at this little mushroom shape and I think it's really cute. And it might be nice to highlight that in some way. So maybe I won't stitch across that top part of the mushroom just so that it stands out and it's a little bit different. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to make lines across the bottom. But first I'm going to put on my pushing thimble that will help me push the needle through if I'm going through some thick fabric. And I have a silicone thimble on my other finger. This first little bit of fabric is a little bit thick. It's a heavier quilting cotton. So I'm really needing those thimbles to help push and pull it through. The other fabrics I'm using are thinner than this. So this is going to be the toughest part. So there's my first line, making sure that I've caught my felt at the back and I have. So I'm turning and going back in the other direction. I'm looking at that mushroom and I'm making a decision about whether I'm gonna stitch through that bottom part and I've decided I'm going to. The color contrast is not high, so it's not gonna obscure anything and it's going to unify it with the rest of the piece. So now I'm gonna change stitch direction. I may come back and add more stitches between the ones I've made but before I do that, I'm gonna go and make these other stitches. I just check where my felt is and make sure that I'm not stitching too far off the edge. And I start moving towards the top. I'm gonna to do the same thing I did before. Once I get to the top, I'm gonna to come back through the back and go back down. And I'm gonna continue and go up and down like this. So here's my first pass across the piece with slow stitching and it's looking really good. The stitches are quite a bit bigger in thickness than the other stitches, so that's a nice contrast. I think I want to add some more. I'm gonna come across the top and I'm gonna go in between those stitches. And I'm liking the look of the top of that mushroom unstitched. So I've added rows in between the rows in the top area, and I like the way that's looking. And now I'm bringing in another color. It's a little bit darker. It's also a thinner thread. And when I put it up against the green piece, I really like the way that it stands out. So this is a pearl cotton number eight, so it's thinner than the five. And it's not that different of a color from what's already there. So I'm gonna use that to stitch in between those lower rows, and that's gonna tie the two sides together because I'm certain that I wanna use this on the green piece. So adding this darker blue is fairly straightforward because I've already got my lines made. I'm starting at the very top of the lines in that direction, going through the bottom of my little mushroom, and then I'm going to turn and go in between the next two rows of stitches. 
So you can see there that it's a little bit darker, but it really matches well. And it adds a little bit of visual interest. I like having two colors that are fairly close to each other and stitching them near each other. It just adds a little bit of depth. And because I'm going to be using this on my green piece, it's going to unify the two halves when they're stitched together. So they will both have this thread in them. So I feel like this side of the piece is done. And I'm gonna move on to stitching on my solid green. I thought it would be fun to mark some lines and I'm bringing out a circle template. I'm not putting it right in the middle of my piece. I'm just offsetting it a little. I'm using a marking pen and instead of tracing a solid line, I'm making a dotted line. Sometimes drawing a solid line pulls a little too much on the fabric. And by using the dotted line, it's not going to distort the fabric at all. So I've made two circles, one on each side, and now I can stitch right over top of them. So I've done the one side and I'm coming back and doing the other side. So I start by making a knot and stitching in the opposite direction that I'm going to go. And then I come back and I do my slow stitching lines. That's a nice way to secure your knot at the very beginning and secure your stitches. Sometimes marking where you're going to stitch, particularly on a solid color, is really helpful to keep track of where you're going. And it makes for a nice crisp line. This is an optional step to mark more lines to follow that circle. You could definitely do it by eye, but there may be reasons why you want to have more marks. So I'm making another row in that same sort of rainbow shape. So I've done that on the right hand side. That's all with marks. And on this side, I'm going to stitch freehand following those lines. So since I'm finished with those temporary lines I've marked, I'm going to come in with an iron to erase them. This is a heat erasable marker. And I have this really tiny iron. It's a clover mini iron. It's really handy for small areas that you want to iron. So I'm bringing it out and I'm touching it really lightly, almost hovering it over top of these stitches. And it's going to make those marking lines disappear. You can see when those lines disappear, how nice that stitching looks. So I've gone in between and made more lines on the right hand side there, just freehand. And now I'm going to come onto the left side and I'm going to follow the lines that I've made. So here I'm not using marking at all. Either option, marking or not marking is fine. It's really about the effect you're looking for and whether given the circumstance you feel like you can do a straight enough line, an accurate enough line if that's important to you. So here my circular shapes are done and I like the way they're looking. And now I'm going to decide what to do next. I think it would be nice to do some straight lines, maybe in different directions like I did on the other piece. That'll sort of tie them together and it also will be visually interesting. So I'm going to make some lines across the bottom. So here we are across the bottom. I've got my lines made. And I want to also point out, I'm going to hold the piece up and see if you can see this sort of rippling effect that you get with slow stitching. This is one of the wonderful, beautiful textural things about stitching is these sort of undulating waves that it creates and it's so beautiful. And so I want to preserve these beautiful ripples that I'm getting in the fabric. So when I'm bringing my iron over to erase any lines that I've marked, I'm really being careful to hover it over top so that I don't flatten all of that. If I take a big iron and I just press really hard, it will erase the lines, but it'll flatten some of that beautiful texture. So that's something to just keep in mind about if you want to preserve that texture, which I do, to be really careful about heat and pressing. So now I'm going to move on and add more lines in other directions. And I think I'm going to do this freehand and see what happens. So here you can see I've stitched lines going up and down fairly close together. And then at the top, I'm doing straight lines like I've done on the bottom. And I'm really liking the effect that I'm getting here. 
So I'm almost at the top and this is going to complete the stitching on this side and I'll be ready to move on to the next step which is adding lining and stitching the bag together. So here's the stitching complete on my green piece. I'm liking the way that looks. I'm going to bring in the yellower piece and now I'm going to choose some lining. I've got this other fabric that coordinates well. It's kind of mottled and blotchy and it's got those same yellow and green tones. So I think that's going to go really well as a lining. Before I cut out my lining, I'm going to create the channels for the drawstring. So first I'm going to audition some fabrics to see which fabric I want to use for the channels. And I have a piece of this yellow that's on the bottom in my patchwork side. So I'm going to bring that in and see what that looks like. I don't really like the way it looks on the patchwork side, but I do like the way that it looks on the green side. So I'm going to use that as my channel. This is a two and a half inch wide strip of fabric. So I need to cut enough so that I can fold in the ends twice to enclose those raw edges. So I'm going to cut it and iron it. And so my final width for the channel, I want it to be about a quarter inch smaller on both sides to factor in the stitching that I'm going to do when I connect the two sides. So here it is. I folded it twice and ironed it. And you can see that it's just the right size. So now I'm going to choose a fabric for the other side of the bag, the patchwork side. I think I'm going to choose the same green and that will really tie the two halves together. Now that fabric is a little bit thinner than that heavier quilting cotton. It's more like a cotton lawn. So I've put a piece of interfacing and I've ironed it in place on the wrong side. And that's going to give it a little bit of thickness and strength. I've stitched the sides down of both my channels and now I'm going to base them in place. So I'm going to flip it the other way because this is going to be encased inside the lining and the front. And I'm going to base them in place. I'm going to put a couple of clips on and I'm going to use regular sewing thread again. These are going to be temporary stitches that I'll remove later. So I'm going to make them really, really close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch. So here they are basted in place and I'm ready to add my lining. So I'm bringing out that fabric that I've chosen and I'm laying my pieces out and I'm cutting the fabric so that it's a little bit bigger. So now I have my two pieces cut and I'm going to line them up along the top to stitch them down. I've taken my erasable marking pen again and I've drawn a line at the very top of my bag and that'll help me know where to stitch so I can stitch a straight line. And I want to give myself lots of leeway so I'm not lining it up at the very top of my lining piece. I'm going to move it down just a bit. Now I'm going to stitch it on. I'm using the back stitch for strength. And as you can see, my channel is encased and the lining is in place. So now I want to remove the excess bulk first with the lining fabric. So I'm snipping that off. And then with the felt and the fabric that remains above where I've stitched, I'm going to cut that out too. So first I'm snipping those basting stitches that I had put in to keep the channel in place. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to snip off as much of that felt as I can. And that's going to really help to reduce the bulk when I flip that back out the right way around. It's going to really help make that a less bulky seam. So now what I'm going to do is turn that right side out and I'm going to stitch right along that line and that's going to help hold down that seam and make it flat. Before I do that, I'm going to trim the rest of the lining that surrounds the rounded part of the bag. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, but fairly close. And then I'm going to stitch down that seam at the top. I'm just going back and forth along that line. I have my thimble on because it's a little bit bulky and that's going to help me push my needle through. 
I'm going to stitch all the way along and that's going to hold everything in place. An option that you have here is for the rest of your lining. You may want to hold that in place as well. So you can do that by stitching it in place or you can do it by fusing it in place. So if you had some double stick fusible, you could put it onto the felt side, place the lining on top, and then iron it in place. And that would hold your lining so that it wouldn't shift around. And the same thing would be achieved if you went back and forth and stitched through your lining into the felt without coming through to the front. So I didn't show it on camera here, but I decided to fuse my lining to the back. And that's just gonna keep everything in place and make it a lot easier for me when I'm stitching everything together. Now I'm going to bring out the template from the pattern. It's the smaller piece. I've traced it onto some cardstock, so it's a little bit thicker. And I'm placing it centrally. I'm looking at my channel and making sure that I've kind of lined it up and it's centered. And I'm also peeking at the back to see if that's covering all my felt so that it's going to encase all my stitching. And it is. So now I'm taking my heat erasable pen and I'm tracing that template. And I'm doing that on both sides. It's really important that I do this because that's going to help me stitch everything together exactly where I want my lines to be. So now I'm ready to join the two pieces. I'm gonna put them right sides together and I want to line them up so that those lines that I've drawn are gonna line up really well. I'm putting some clips at the top and then I'm gonna use what I call the needle test to see if the pieces are aligned. And what I do is I take a needle and I stick it right on the line through to the other side and see if it comes out on the other drawn line. And I can see here that at the top it's lining up. When I stick my needle through, it comes out at the back. And I'm gonna do it along the bottom as well, just to make sure it's lined up and it's working well. So now I know that I can stitch these two pieces together. So here are my two pieces stitched together. I'm gonna bring out my little iron again, and I'm gonna hover it over top. You can really see once those lines disappear, all the stitching that I've done. So what I've done on the top, maybe about an inch, I've done some back stitching to really reinforce the top and make it strong. And then around the rest of it, I've done just regular stitching. Now I'm gonna check my seams and see if I've joined everything where I want it to and there aren't any raw edges. So I'm gonna turn it right side out. I'm gonna run my finger along those seams. I'm gonna have a look at it and see. It looks good to me. So now I'm gonna turn it back the other way and I'm gonna deal with the raw edges. So you can see I have a fairly large amount of fabric outside of my seam. So I wanna trim some of that down but I wanna leave one side and that's gonna help me fold over and encase all the raw edges. I also have some parts I can see on the felt where I've stitched right to the edge and that's where my knots are. So I don't wanna remove that part. So I'm gonna come in with my scissors and I'm gonna snip away as much as I can. And I'm gonna pay attention to those spots where I have my knots and I have stitching. And I'm just gonna leave those. And I think that that's gonna work out and I'm gonna be able to enclose these seams and make a nice clean edge. So I'm gonna take the longer edge and I'm gonna fold it over the other bits of raw fabric. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna fold the fabric to one side and stitch it down. So here I've started on the one side and I'm gonna stitch down until I get to the rounded part. And when I get to the rounded part, I'm going to do a bit of clipping at the seams just to give myself a bit of ease for when I'm turning that. So I come in with my scissors and I'm going to clip all the fabric, making sure I don't go all the way through to the seam that I've created. I'm just going to clip where there aren't any stitches. That's going to give me a bit of leeway when I'm folding back this fabric and stitching it down. So you can see on the one side here where I folded everything down, and then around the bottom, I've really used those clipped pieces of fabric to make a rounded shape. And then when I come back along the side, I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other side where I'm gonna be able to fold it in. And that's gonna create a nice clean seam on the inside. 
So here it is stitched. It's much nicer than it was before. There's still some raw edges, but it makes for a really nice inside. So I'm gonna turn it around with the right side out. I'm gonna have a final look at it and make sure that I'm happy with everything, both the outside and the inside. And I think it's looking really nice. I'm just gonna take my fingers and roll that bulky seam a little bit to flatten it. And it's looking really nice. So now I'm ready to add the drawstrings to the top. I'm gonna to use a t-shirt to make my drawstrings. So this is the bottom of the t-shirt where there's a seam. So I'm gonna cut that off. And after that's gone, I'm going to cut a strip about an inch wide all the way along. And those are gonna become my strings. So here's the inch that I've cut off the bottom of the t-shirt. It's a round circle at this point. So I need to cut it so that it's one long piece of string. And all you do is you just pull on it. And when you pull on it, it curls up on itself and it becomes a really nice, soft string. So here's my big, long piece of string that I've gotten just from that one inch strip of the t-shirt. It's very soft, it's curled up, it's really nice. So now I just need to measure how much I need. I need enough to go all the way around from one side to the other, and I'm gonna give myself a little extra and I'm gonna cut it, and then I need a second piece. So I'm gonna use my first piece to measure my second piece, and I'm gonna cut it. So there's my two pieces, and now I just need to thread them through the channels. So I'm gonna take a safety pin and fold over the edge and put the pin through and close it. And then I'm gonna take that pin and run it through the channel. I'm gonna start on the right side and go all the way around both channels and come out on the right side again. So I push it through, pull it out, and I continue in the other side, push it through and pull it out. And that's my one string. And then I'm gonna take my other string and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna start on the other side. Then I just need to tie off my strings. I'm just gonna tie a knot. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And then I'm going to clip off the ends. And then my drawstring is complete. And now my little rounded pouch is complete. I love this rounded shape. It's so cute. And it's a nice size to put a few things in. Little treasures or even practical things like keys and a credit card. It was such an enjoyable project. And remember, if you want to try one too, there's a free pattern available. And all the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stitching.